If you're under the age of 25, you might be asking, who the hell is Jay Paul? Looking at his discography, you can see he's only had a handful of releases, none of which have appeared higher than a triple figure on any official music chart. Yet his tracks have been covered by the likes of Drake, Beyonce and Ed Sheeran, and fans consistently place him as one of the greatest artists of our time. In this video, we're going deep into the music of Jay Paul, unpacking how he managed to make such a significant impact with such little output, and discussing whether we may be on the cusp of one of the greatest comebacks by an artist who barely made it in the first place. It all started with a falsetto, sweetly singing. Don't fuck with me, don't fuck with me. The track, originally uploaded to MySpace in 2010, caught fire. Enough to earn Jay Paul a record deal and several high profile accolades within a year. I know I've been on a long time. It seemed to happen out of nowhere. He jumped from obscurity to the person on the entire music industry's lips with just one song. And it wasn't just a regular song. It was a weird kind of off-kilter pop record that no one had ever heard before. Only a month after BTS TU was released on XL Recordings, Drake sampled the now immortal vocal for his track, Dreams Money Can Buy. From India, she and Charlotte Olympias. We taught music for hours. She the mainstream co signs only fueled the hype, triggering what felt like J Paul mania across the music scene. The thing is, no one really knew who he was outside of that MySpace profile. He rarely appeared in public or did any kind of press. He was just a quiet guy from Rainer's Lane, making music for his own enjoyment. A year after BTS TU, Paul released Jasmine, a complex and wispy love song with an instantly recognizable bass line that helped him gain further immortality through A-list stars. Question, no. It is. <laughs> it is. But what the All I know is what is he saying? saying? Oh. I, I think he's saying, Are you with me, Jasmine? The hunger for new J. Paul material was real. Any hint of a song had fans and music blogs clamoring for more. But why? His tracks blended a DIY charm with remarkably soulful pop instincts. You can hear echoes of Prince and D'Angelo in his work pioneering artists who were known for building their music from the ground up, for reinventing pop and R&B with stunning musicianship. They cleverly combined eras of music that might not seem to go well together on paper. Talking about his later track, 100,000, he said, it's quite fucked up. It's got sort of like ELO harmonies, 90s hip hop drums, Motown guitar, and a Harry Potter sample at the beginning. Straight Outta Mumbai is another winner, a twisty R&B jam that ends with a Bajan sample, a hint of his Indian heritage embedded into a funky pop song in a very London way. The staggered pulse of BTS TU touches on both J Dilla and more modern strains of hip hop, with its oddly placed kick drums, layered vocals and borrowing bass line. He looped and manipulated the human voice in a way that post-dubstep producers like James Blake were experimenting with around the same time. One of Jay Paul's signature tricks is the way he oscillates and compresses the sounds in his songs so that the synth leads squeeze out of each bar with a pop. Listen to the way his voice fights for dominance with the lead synth in Jasmine. <laughs> The next track is uh, by, I'm not entirely sure if it's Jay Paul or Jai Paul, how you pronounce his name, but the track's called Jasmine. And I think like a lot of people in the last few years, I was totally transfixed by 
this track. It's just such a distinctive sound. Yes, the, the first thing that you notice is just the, like the kind of mad sounds that come out of nowhere as you're listening to the track. Something will like uh, slice through the mix. It wasn't just Caribou that Jay had influenced. Countless other producers have also cited him as an inspiration. But then, just as the momentum around Paul was gaining traction, on a fateful weekend in 2013, a collection of his songs appeared on Bandcamp. The internet exploded at what appeared to be the release of Paul's long-awaited debut album. But the tracks were rough and unmastered. A handful came in under just a minute in length, featuring clips from television shows like Gossip Girl. I'm British and a lord. By Monday, Paul had created a Twitter account to disavow the release. It was an unauthorized leak. Jai Paul has urged fans not to buy a recently released long player purporting to be his new album by insisting it is an illegal leak. Paul contacted the police who launched an investigation. Funds to the suspect's PayPal were frozen and the money people had paid eventually refunded. But it was too late. The music was out there. Paul had been denied the opportunity to finish his work, to share it in its best possible form at a time he considered it to be complete and ready. The stress of the situation led Paul to retreat even further into the shadows, withdrawing from the music industry he'd only just begun to explore. Unfinished or not, the leak was full of sparks of brilliance, of songs that could have been hits. But I like it raw. And despite the circumstances, the album still ranked in end-of-year lists, even making it onto Pitchfork's 100 Best Albums of the Decade so far. For many, these tracks were hits. Songs that people obsessed over for years, picking apart every production technique and every possible lyrical interpretation, with the songs hard to find, unofficial status, only increasing Paul's mythical standing. He remained quiet for years after. A Facebook group was even set up, attempting to track him down, clinging onto every mention or sighting. In 2016, after three years of silence, he started the Paul Institute with his brother and musical collaborator, AK. The project offered a nebulous platform for emerging artists eventually releasing music from Ruthven, Fabiana Palladino and AK himself. The Institute remained his lasting legacy until, in 2019, out of nowhere, came the moment his fans had all been waiting for, new music. Two new tracks, rich once again in melodic structures and homespun but deeply impressive production that only strengthened his comparison to Prince. Paul then finally made peace with the leak, it seemed. All of the original leak tracks, officially released in embryonic form, as an album meant to be called Bait Ones and a heartfelt note from Paul himself. These two releases hinted at a revival that at that time did not fully materialize. It almost felt like he was testing the water. This year sees another major milestone in the unpredictable path of Paul's career, his first ever live show. Many were stunned to see the UK artist's name on the 2023 Coachella poster. 
He's not a headliner, but the anticipation of his inclusion dwarfed most other talk about the lineup. All right, third, Frank Ocean. In what can only be a beautifully aligned coincidence, the day of the live show will mark the 10 year anniversary of the leak. It's unclear what he'll play or how he'll play it. It could be a full circle moment or the comeback everyone has been waiting for. But either way, it's something to celebrate. Don't fuck with me, don't.